understood that term before this year. But um, because when I, I get attacked so much, it's just a constant thing, and it's so painful. And, and because I know the person is going to get hurt, they keep doing that. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I'd rather see them get clear of it, you know. But they throw demons, and they don't know they're throwing demons. Okay. But nonetheless, you know, when you, you go through it, <laughs> sort of, I cut everything away from me and throw it back to where it came from or throw it into the pit, right, and seal it with the name of Yeshua because because of what that name does, the name above all names, because it, um, the Yod is number one ten times. It comes in the physical and well, he's the, the righteous judge. Life, and comes into the physical to create new matter, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so that's he, like that's how that's righteous judgment on the elemental like like on the atomic level or subatomic level. Yeah, yeah, yes, on a spiritual level because we're in a spiritual war. The physical world is just a <clears throat> distraction. Well, the physical <laughs> world is definitely not the most real of the of what's going on. There's a there's a more <laughs> real unseen dimension that's that has more influence and. Where the physical world's actually the result of this unseen realm, mm -hmm. so that most mm -hmm. most of what's going on in our prayers or something is to put out. It's kind of like throwing rocks into the dark. You're like throwing rocks into the unseen and trying to hope that it. Well, it, they're kind of like guided missiles. If you did your prayer right, it's it's gonna create your shield or something. Or it, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. It's kind of like. Celestial, it's kind of like how Sherry Shriner gets kind of like this space age celestial battle going on here. Well, it, it is, it really is. Read on her website, Angels in the Flesh. I mean, boy, did that ever hit me hard because, yep, I was already thinking that all my life, but I couldn't say anything. You know, yeah, I got my harp and my wings, I'll come play Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's the thing I wanted to tell you. The two brothers, you know, the two tribes, um, uh, the two brothers. Oh, boys Ephraim and uh, Manasseh? What? What? The two brothers, Ephraim and Manasseh? No, no. Let me. Uh, Abraham's son, before the Muslims and the Jews split up as brothers. Oh, okay, okay. yeah. Abraham was, be, or it was before the people of the book, so. The, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Isaac. That, that God has a name. Yeah, yod Hey, vau Hey. okay? Yod is, num is number one ten times. Now, what that means is number one is the all-pervading primordial force of everything that is and is not. It's the first principle. That's number one. This is the physics of it. If they say in the mystic books, if you know your ABCs. So B, then, is Bayet or Beth or, you know, which is the container or the house for pulling that and it takes that energy and it moves it into structures that's a female and number one is that's number two and number one is male syllable are you talking about the syllable one and syllable two of the word well this is your alphabet i'm just going to start with the a b c d and then i'm going to go back to the name of god okay, oh, okay. the a b c is the organic movement gimel camel of all containers b containing aleph a or number one. Four, physical existence. So A, B, C equals D. There's an equals in there, they don't tell you. Physical existence, when acted upon by five, hey, actually allows it to play the life death principle. And. <clears throat> so this, is part, this word is reality. like an equation? It's an equation. This is and that's what Jehovah is. Yah or Yahweh or Jehovah, that's an equation, huh? That's an equation. Now, when we take that equation and we say, okay, let's change the old law and change it to the new law. Well, let's see what the let, let's see what the old the, what the equation is. Is this so the old or the new covenant? The word vibration or breath, which is what you would use because that's manna, and you're using a word and it's a vibration of something, and you have that, and that's your idea of what it is that you think you need. Then, hey, is the visual picture of the end result. Now, how are you going to get there? The picture, it looks like a little box, okay? 
then that always the nail that nails it in. That's your emotions, how you feel about it, good, bad, or ugly, which equals the second hey, which has a dot in it. Uh-oh, something has been manifested because it's now in a box. So it's equal. There's one, two, three, equal, fourth letter, usually. Spirit goes okay. into matter. It becomes matter. So if I want a house, I'm going to say, ah, oh, I need a house. I'm going to put a lot of mana into that. I'm going to do deep breathing words. I'm going to say the words, uh, vibration, feel, what it, you know, I'm going to have that idea of the whole thing. Now, hey, the visual picture, I see myself with my hands behind my head, my feet are up on the coffee table, I'm in my new house, and I'm saying those things. Now, how would I feel if I were in that house? Oh, I don't know. If I, no, that's not how I'm going to feel. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to get it. No. I'm going to feel like, wow, I'm in my new house. It's got this and this and this and this. I'm going to see those well, pictures you, too. Try, try to be humble in your new house there now. Oh, I'm more than humble. Listen, I'm yeah. humble constantly. So anyway, then, then it equals the second hay has a dot in it. I get my new house. And thanks be to God, I didn't have to pay anything for it. And I don't have to pay rent for it. It's free. Oh, it's you from if you build a if you build a masjid for Allah in this world, he'll build a masjid for you that you live in as your house for eternity in in uh, Jannah or paradise. Well, I'd rather let God build me something that He wants. Um, yeah, so we can build that in our brains. We can build that in. I'm building a place for God. This is what this is. I think your greenhouse green your greenhouse is kind of nice little place for God in there. Mm -hmm. My artichokes are taller than me, and my dill is up to my ears. What's up to your ears, I'm up dill? My ears and dill. My corns are still knee high. Anyway, let me finish this equation. So when the old covenant changed to the new, when the spirit was sent, that was prepared for all those centuries. Take up, wipe your lamb, and get rid of the blood, get rid of the fat, get rid of the bread, because the bread carries candida, and you are standing in place of your brothers who are sacrificing babies to Baal, and you're actually offering up your sins as well as theirs, and one day you won't have to do it anymore because somebody very special is going to do that for you, and on the day he died, the lamb ran away out of the temple at the moment he died, and so that, and the temple was ripped from the top to the bottom, exposing the Holy of Holies, meaning everybody can go in and have what they need at any moment by going to that spirit. Now, what it changes the covenant law word, yod hey sheen vel hey. So the sheen is the fire breath of life that changes karma to grace. So whatever it used to be, it's all cleansed off now. It's all clean now. You're all brand new. Start over. That was the fulfillment of the yod law hey. that Jesus mentioned, or? That's, that changes Yehovah to Yehoshua, which is Jesus' name. And that's, so the, that's, why that that's the fulfillment of the covenant? Or the, I'm sorry, the fulfillment of the law of Moses, when he says that he, yeah. he's there to fulfill the law of Moses? Yeah, that was the fulfillment, because now we have a spirit that we can trust. No, the rest of the spirits are, you can trust. They'll lie, because they're sent. Anybody that's of God is not going to be... Well, we know everyone. We know they went astray you know, before Jesus came. So. Hmm? They did go astray before Jesus came, so they were on. They were probably worshiping the wrong thing there. Oh heavens! Can you imagine Rome living in Rome when they've got these gods and goddesses that they're not there anymore? These fifteen foot, uh, hundred and fifty foot tall gods are not there anymore. Oh, the giants! But 